Achilles. In Greek mythology, Achilles or Achilleus, Achilleus, was a Greek hero of the Trojan War and the central character and greatest warrior of Homer's Iliad. His mother was the immortal Nereid Thetis, and his father, the mortal Peleus, was the king of the Myrmidons. Achilles' most notable feat during the Trojan War was the slaying of the Trojan hero Hector outside the gates of Troy. Although the death of Achilles is not presented in the Iliad, other sources concur that he was killed near the end of the Trojan War by Paris, who shot him in the heel with an arrow. Later legends, beginning with a poem by Stadius in the 1 SD century AD, state that Achilles was invulnerable in all of his body except for his heel because, when his mother Thetis dipped him in the river Styx as an infant, she held him by one of his heels. Alluding to these legends, the term Achilles' heel has come to mean a point of weakness, especially in someone or something with an otherwise a strong constitution. Linear B tablets attest to the personal name Achilles in the forms Akiriu and Akiriwi, the latter being the dated of the former. The name grew more popular, even becoming common soon after the 7th century BC and was also turned into the female form Chiota Lambda Lambda Epsilon Alpha, Achillea, attested in Attica in the 4th century BC. Ig 2 squared 1617, and, in the form Achillea, on a stele in Holocarnassus as the name of a female gladiator fighting an Amazon. Achilles' name can be analyzed as a combination of, distress, pain, sorrow, grief and, people, soldiers, nation, resulting in a proto-form Achilawasi who hates people distressed or he whose people have distress. The grief or distress of the people is a theme raised numerous times in the Iliad, and frequently by Achilles himself. Achilles' role as the hero of grief or distress forms an ironic juxtaposition with the conventional view of him as the hero of, glory, usually in war. Furthermore, Laos has been construed by Gregory Nagy, following Leonard Palmer, to mean a corps of soldiers, a muster. With this derivation, the name obtains a double meaning in the poem, when the hero is functioning rightly. His men bring distress to the enemy, but when wrongly, his men get the grief of war. The poem is in part about the misdirection of anger on the part of leadership. Another etymology relates the name to a Proto Indo European compound H2 Akpod Sharpfoot, which first gave an Illyrian Agapedios, evolving through time into Akpedios and then Achidius. The shift from DD to LL is then ascribed to the passing of the name into Greek via pre Greek source. The first root part H2 X sharp, pointed also gave Greek kappa. Ache point, silence, healing, kappa mu, acme point, edge, zenith, and xi sigma, oxus sharp, pointed, keen, quick, clever, whereas chi omicron sigma stems from the root h2 eek to be upset, afraid. The whole expression would be comparable to the Latin acupedia swift off foot. Compare also the Latin word family of a c sharp edge or point, battle line, battle, engagement, a cause needle, pin, bodkin. And a QO to make pointed, sharpen, wet, to exercise, to arouse, when secute. Some topical epithet of Achilles in the Iliad point to this swift footedness, namely Pi Omicron Delta Rho Kappa Eta Sigma Delta Omicron Sigma Chi Iota Lambda Lambda Epsilon Sigma, Podarx Dios Achilleus Swift Footed Divine Achilles, or, even more frequently, Pi Delta Alpha Sigma Kappa Sigma Chi Iota Lambda Lambda Epsilon Sigma, Podas Ocus Achilleus Quick Footed Achilles. Some researchers deem the name a loan word, possibly from a pre-Greek language. Achilles' descent from the Nereid Thetis and a similarity of his name with those of river deities such as Acheron and Achilles have led to speculations about him being an old water divinity, see below worship. Robert S. P. Beeks has suggested a pre-Greek origin of the name, based among other things on the coexistence of, Lambda Lambda, and, Lambda. In epic language, which may account for a palatalized phoneme slash L slash in the original language. Achilles was the son of the Nereid Thetis and of Peleus, the king of the Myrmidons. Zeus and Poseidon had been rivals for the hand of Thetis until Prometheus, the forethinker, warned Zeus of a prophecy, originally uttered by Demis, goddess of divine law, that Thetis would bear a son greater than his father. For this reason, the two gods withdrew their pursuit, and had her wed Peleus. There is a tale which offers an alternative version of these events, in the Argonautica, 4.760. Zeus' sister and wife Hera alludes to Thetis' chaste resistance to the advances of Zeus, pointing out that Thetis was so loyal to Hera's marriage bond that she coolly rejected the father of gods. Thetis, although a daughter of the sea god Nereus, was also brought up by Hera, further explaining her resistance to the advances of Zeus. 
Zeus was furious and decreed that she would never marry an immortal. According to the Achilleid, written by Stadius in the 1st century AD, and to non-surviving previous sources, when Achilles was born Thetis tried to make him immortal by dipping him in the river Styx. However, he was left vulnerable at the part of the body by which she held him, his left heel, see Achilles' heel, Achilles' tendon. It is not clear if this version of events was known earlier. In another version of this story, Thetis anointed the boy in ambrosia and put him on top of a fire in order to burn away the mortal parts of his body. She was interrupted by Peleus and abandoned both father and son in a rage. However, none of the sources before Stadius make any reference to this general invulnerability. To the contrary, in the Iliad Homer mentions Achilles being wounded, in Book 21 the Paeonian hero Asteropaeus, son of Pelagon, challenged Achilles by the river Scamander. He cast two spears at once, one grazed Achilles' elbow, drawing a spurt of blood. Also, in the fragmentary poems of the epic cycle in which one can find description of the hero's death, i.e. the Cypria, the Little Iliad by Leskes of Pyrrha, the Aethiopes and Iliopersis by Arctinus of Miletus, there is no trace of any reference to his general invulnerability or his famous weakness at the heel, in the later vase paintings presenting the death of Achilles, the arrow, or in many cases, arrows, hit his body. Peleus entrusted Achilles to Chiron the centaur, on Mount Pelion, to be reared. Thetis foretold that her son's fate was either to gain glory and die young, or to live a long but uneventful life in obscurity. Achilles chose the former, and decided to take part in the Trojan War. According to Homer, Achilles grew up in Thyia together with his companion Patroclus. According to Phocius, the sixth book of the New History by Ptolemy Hephaestion reported that Thetis burned in a secret place the children she had by Peleus, but when she had Achilles, Peleus noticed, tore him from the flames with only a burnt foot, and confided him to the centaur Chiron. Later Chiron exhumed the body of the Damisus, who was the fastest of all the giants, removed the ankle, and incorporated it into Achilles' burnt foot. Some post-Homeric sources claim that in order to keep Achilles safe from the war, Thetis, or, in some versions, Peleus, hid the young man at the court of Lycomedes, king of Scyros. There, Achilles is disguised as a girl and lives among Lycomedes' daughters, perhaps under the name Pyrrha, the red-haired girl. With Lycomedes' daughter Datamaya, whom in the account of Stadius he rapes, Achilles their father's a son, Neoptolemus, also called Pyrrhus, after his father's possible alias. According to this story, Odysseus learns from the prophet Calchas that the Achaeans would be unable to capture Troy without Achilles' aid. Odysseus goes to Skiros in the guise of a peddler selling women's clothes and jewelry and places a shield and spear among his goods. When Achilles instantly takes up the spear, Odysseus sees through his disguise and convinces him to join the Greek campaign. In another version of the story, Odysseus arranges for a trumpet alarm to be sounded while he was with Lycomedes' women, while the women flee in panic. Achilles prepares to defend the court, thus giving his identity away. According to the Iliad, Achilles arrived at Troy with fifty ships, each carrying fifty Myrmidons. He appointed five leaders, each leader commanding five hundred Myrmidons, Menestheus, Eudorus, Pisander, Phoenix, and Alcimedon. When the Greeks left for the Trojan War, they accidentally stopped in Mysia, ruled by King Telephus. In the resulting battle, Achilles gave Telephus a wound that would not heal. Telephus consulted an oracle, who stated that he that wounded shall heal. Guided by the oracle, he arrived at Argos, where Achilles healed him in order that he might become their guide for the voyage to Troy. According to other reports in Euripides' lost play about Telephus, he went to Alice pretending to be a beggar and asked Achilles to heal his wound. Achilles refused, claiming to have no medical knowledge. Alternatively, Telephus held Orestes for ransom. The ransom being Achilles' aid in healing the wound. Odysseus reasoned that the spear had inflicted the wound, therefore, the spear must be able to heal it. Pieces of the spear were scraped off onto the wound and Telephus was shield. According to the Cypria, the part of the epic cycle that tells the events of the Trojan War before Achilles' wrath, when the Achaeans desired to return home, they were restrained by Achilles, who afterwards attacked the cattle of Aeneas, sacked neighboring cities, like Pedasus and Leonisus where the Greeks captured the queen Brishas and killed Tennis, a son of Apollo, as well as Priam's son Troilus in the sanctuary of Apollo Thymbraos. However, the romance between Troilus and Chris is described in Geoffrey Chaucer's Troilus and Cressida and in William Shakespeare's Troilus and Cressida is a medieval invention. In Dares Phrygia's account of the destruction of Troy, 
the Latin summary through which the story of Achilles was transmitted to medieval Europe, as well as in older accounts, Troilus was a young Trojan prince, the youngest of King Priam's and Hecuba's five legitimate sons, or according other sources, another son of Apollo. Despite his youth, he was one of the main Trojan war leaders, a horse fighter or chariot fighter according to Homer. Prophecies linked Troilus' fate to that of Troy and so he was ambushed in an attempt to capture him. Yet Achilles, struck by the beauty of both Troilus and his sister Polyxena, and overcome with lust, directed his sexual attentions one youth, who, refusing to yield, instead found himself decapitated upon an altar on the loss of Apollo Thymbraos. Later versions of the story suggested Troilus was accidentally killed by Achilles in an over-ardent lover's embrace. In this version of the myth, Achilles' death therefore came in retribution for this sacrilege. Ancient writers treated Troilus as the epitome of a dead child mourned by his parents. Had Troilus lived to adulthood, the first Vatican mythographer claimed, Troy would have been invincible. Homer's Iliad is the most famous narrative of Achilles' deeds in the Trojan War. Achilles' wrath, mu nu iota sigma chi iota lambda lambda omega sigma, many sicilios, is the central theme of the poem. The first two lines of the Iliad read the Homeric epic only covers a few weeks of the decade-long war, and does not narrate Achilles' death. It begins with Achilles' withdrawal from battle after being dishonored by Agamemnon, the commander of the Achaean forces. Agamemnon has taken a woman named Chrysus as his slave. Her father Chryses, a priest of Apollo, begs Agamemnon to return her to him. Agamemnon refuses, and Apollo sends a plague amongst the Greeks. The prophet Kalkos correctly determines the source of the troubles but will not speak unless Achilles vows to protect him. Achilles does so, and Kalkos declares that Chrysus must be returned to her father. Agamemnon consents, but then commands that Achilles battle prize Brishes, the daughter of Briseis, be brought to him to replace Chrysus. Angry at the dishonor of having his plunder and glory taken away, and, as he says later, because he loves Brishes, with the urging of his mother Thetis, Achilles refuses to fight or lead his troops alongside the other Greek forces. At the same time, burning with rage over Agamemnon's theft, Achilles prays to Thetis to convince Zeus to help the Trojans gain ground in the war, so that he may regain his honor. As the battle turns against the Greeks, thanks to the influence of Zeus, Nestor declares that the Trojans are winning because Agamemnon has angered Achilles, and urges the king to appease the warrior. Agamemnon agrees and sends Odysseus and two other chieftains, Ajax and Phoenix, to Achilles with the offer of the return of Briseis and other gifts. Achilles rejects all Agamemnon offers him and simply urges the Greeks to sail home as he was planning to do. The Trojans, led by Hector, subsequently push the Greek army back toward the beaches and assault the Greek ships. With the Greek forces on the verge of absolute destruction, Patroclus leads the Myrmidons into battle, wearing Achilles' armor though Achilles remains at his camp. Patroclus succeeds in pushing the Trojans back from the beaches, but is killed by Hector before he can lead a proper assault on the city of Troy. After receiving the news of the death of Patroclus from Antilochus, the son of Nestor, Achilles grieves over his beloved companion's death. His mother Thetis comes to comfort the distraught Achilles. She persuades Hephaestus to make new armor for him, in place of the armor that Patroclus had been wearing, which was taken by Hector. The new armor includes the shield of Achilles, described in great detail in the poem. Enraged over the death of Patroclus, Achilles ends his refusal to fight and takes the field, killing many men in his rage but always seeking out Hector. Achilles even engages in battle with the river god's commander, who has become angry that Achilles is choking his waters with all the men he has killed. The god tries to drown Achilles but is stopped by Hera and Hephaestus. Zeus himself takes note of Achilles' rage and sends the gods to restrain him so that he will not go on to sack Troy itself before the time allotted for its destruction, seeming to show that the unhindered rage of Achilles can defy fate itself. Finally, Achilles finds his prey. Achilles chases Hector around the wall of Troy three times before Athena, in the form of Hector's favorite and dearest brother, Deiphobus, persuades Hector to stop running and fight Achilles face to face. After Hector realizes the trick, he knows the battle is inevitable. Wanting to go down fighting, he charges at Achilles with his only weapon, his sword, but misses. Accepting his fate, Hector begs Achilles, not to spare his life, but to treat his body with respect after killing him. Achilles tells Hector it is hopeless to expect that of him, declaring that my rage, my fury would drive me now to hack your flesh away and eat you raw, such agonies you have caused me. Achilles then kills Hector and drags his corpse by its heels behind his chariot. 
After having a dream where Patroclus begs Achilles to hold his funeral, Achilles hosts a series of funeral games in his honor. With the assistance of the god Hermes, Hector's father, Priam, goes to Achilles' tent to plead with Achilles for the return of Hector's body so that he can be buried. Achilles relents and promises a truce for the duration of the funeral. The poem ends with a description of Hector's funeral, with the doom of Troy and Achilles himself still to come. The Ethiopus, 7th century BC, and a work named Post Homerica, composed by Quintus of Smyrna in the 4th century AD, relate further events from the Trojan War. When Penicillia, queen of the Amazons and daughter of Ares, arrives in Troy, Priam hopes that she will defeat Achilles. After his temporary truce with Priam, Achilles fights and kills the warrior queen only to grieve over her death later. At first, he was so distracted by her beauty, he did not fight as intensely as usual. Once he realized that his distraction was endangering his life, he refocused and killed her. Following the death of Patroclus, Nestor's son Antilochus becomes Achilles' closest companion. When Memnon, son of the dawn goddess Eos and king of Ethiopia, slays Antilochus, Achilles once more obtains revenge on the battlefield, killing Memnon. Consequently, Eos will not let the sun rise, until Zeus persuades her. The fight between Achilles and Memnon over Antilochus echoes that of Achilles and Hector over Patroclus, except that Memnon, unlike Hector, was also the son of a goddess. Many Homeric scholars argued that episode inspired many details in the Iliad's description of the death of Patroclus and Achilles' reaction to it. The episode then formed the basis of the cyclic epic Ethiopus, which was composed after the Iliad, possibly in the 7th century BC. The Ethiopus is now lost, except for scattered fragments quoted by later authors. The exact nature of Achilles' relationship with Patroclus has been a subject of dispute in both the classical period and modern times. In the Iliad, it appears to be the model of a deep and loyal friendship. Homer does not suggest that Achilles and his close friend Patroclus were lovers. Despite there being no direct evidence in the text of the Iliad that Achilles and Patroclus were lovers, this theory was expressed by some later authors. Commentators from classical antiquity to the present have often interpreted the relationship through the lens of their own cultures. In 5th century BC Athens, the intense bond was often viewed in light of the Greek custom of paederastia. In Plato's Symposium, the participants in a dialogue about love assume that Achilles and Patroclus were a couple. Phaedrus argues that Achilles was the younger and more beautiful one so he was the beloved and Patroclus was the lover. But ancient Greek had no words to distinguish heterosexual and homosexual and it was assumed that a man could both desire handsome young men and have sex with women. The death of Achilles, as predicted by Hector with his dying breath, was brought about by Paris with a narrow, to the heel according to Stadius. In some versions, the god Apollo guided Paris' arrow. Some retellings also state that Achilles was scaling the gates of Troy and was hit with a poisoned arrow. All of these versions deny Paris any sort of valor, owing to the common conception that Paris was a coward and not the man his brother Hector was, and Achilles remained undefeated on the battlefield. His bones were mingled with those of Patroclus, and funeral games were held. He was represented in the Ethiopus as living after his death in the island of Laiki at the mouth of the river Danube. Another version of Achilles' death is that he fell deeply in love with one of the Trojan princesses, Polyxena. Achilles asks Priam for Polyxena's hand in marriage. Priam is willing because it would mean the end of the war in an alliance with the world's greatest warrior. But while Priam is overseeing the private marriage of Polyxena and Achilles, Paris, who would have to give up Helen if Achilles married his sister, hides in the bushes and shoots Achilles with a divine arrow, killing him. In the Odyssey, Agamemnon informs Achilles of his pompous burial and the erection of his mound at the Hellespont while they are receiving the dead suitors in Hades. He claims they built a massive burial mound on the beach of Ilion that could be seen by anyone approaching from the ocean. Achilles was cremated and his ashes buried in Thessamy urn as those of Patroclus. Paris was later killed by Philoctetes using the enormous bow of Heracles. In Book 11 of Homer's Odyssey, Odysseus sails to the underworld and converses with the shades. One of these is Achilles, who when greeted as blessed in life, blessed in death, responds that he would rather be a slave to the worst of masters than be king of all the dead. But Achilles then asks Odysseus of his son's exploits in the Trojaner, and when Odysseus tells of Neoptolemus' heroic actions, Achilles is filled with satisfaction. This leaves the reader with an ambiguous understanding of how Achilles felt about the heroic life. According to some accounts, he had married Medea in life so that after both their deaths they were united in the Elysian fields of Hades, 
as Hera promised Thetis in Apollonius Argonautica, 3rd century BC. Achilles' armor was the object of a feud between Odysseus and Telamonian Ajax, Ajax the Greater. They competed for it by giving speeches on why they were the bravest after Achilles to their Trojan prisoners, who after considering both men, decided Odysseus was more deserving of the armor. Furious, Ajax cursed Odysseus, which earned him there of Athena. Athena temporarily made Ajax so mad with grief and anguish that he began killing sheep, thinking them his comrades. After a while, when Athena lifted his madness and Ajax realized that he had actually been killing sheep, Ajax was left so ashamed that he committed suicide. Odysseus eventually gave the armor to Neoptolemus, the son of Achilles. A relic claimed to be Achilles' bronze-headed spear was for centuries preserved in the temple of Athena on the Acropolis of Phasilus, Lycia, a port on the Pamphylian Gulf. The city was visited in 333 BC by Alexander the Great, who envisioned himself as the new Achilles and carried the Iliad with him, but his court biographers do not mention that spear. However, it was shown in the time of Pausanias in the 2nd century AD. Numerous paintings on pottery have suggested a tale not mentioned in the literary traditions. At some point in the war, Achilles and Ajax were playing a board game, Petia. They were absorbed in the game and oblivious to the surrounding battle. The Trojans attacked and reached the heroes, who were saved only by an intervention of Athena. The tomb of Achilles, extant throughout antiquity in Trode, was venerated by Thessalians, but also by Persian expeditionary forces, as well as by Alexander the Great and the Roman Emperor Caracalla. Achilles' cult was also to be found at other places, e.g on the island of Astypale in the Spur Ads, in Sparta which had a sanctuary, in Elis and in Achilles' homeland Thessaly, as well as in the Magna Gratia cities of Tarentum, Locri, and Croton, accounting for an almost panhellenic cult to the hero. The spread and intensity of the hero's veneration among the Greeks that had settled on the northern coast of the Pontus Euxinus, today's Black Sea, appears to have been remarkable. An archaic cult is attested for the Malaysian colony of Albia as well as for an island in the middle of the Black Sea, today identified with Snake Island, Ukrainian, Zmini, near Kilia, Ukraine. Early dedicatory inscriptions from the Greek colonies on the Black Sea, graffiti and inscribed clay discs, these possibly being votive offerings from Albia, the area of Berezan Island and the Tauric Chersonese, attest the existence of a heroic cult of Achilles from the 6th century BC onwards. The cult was still thriving in the 3rd century AD, when dedicatory stele from Albia refer to an Achilles pont arches, Piomicron nu tauro chi eta sigma, roughly lord of the sea, or of the Pontus Euxinus, who was invoked as a protector of the city of Albia, venerated on par with Olympian gods such as the local Apollo prostates, Hermes Agoraeus, or Poseidon. Pliny the Elder, 23-79 AD, in his natural history mentions a port of the Achaea and an island of Achilles, famous for the tomb of that man, Porches Achaeorum, Insula Achilles, Tumulaeus Clara, situated somewhat nearby Albia and the Dnieper Bug estuary. Furthermore, at 125 Roman miles from this island, he places a peninsula which stretches forth in the shape of a sword obliquely, called Dromos Achilleos. Chiota Lambda Lambda Omega Sigma Delta Romeo Omicron Sigma, Achilles Dromos the race course of Achilles, and considered the place of the hero's exercise or of games instituted by him. This last feature of Pliny's account is considered to be the iconic spit, called today Tindra, or Cosa Tindra and Cosa di Yerlgach, situated between the mouth of the Dnieper and Carcanet Bay, but which is hardly 125 Roman miles, circa 185 kilometers, away from the Dnieper Bug estuary as Pliny states. To the race course he gives a length of 80 miles, circa 120 kilometers, whereas the spit measures circa 70 kilometers today. In the following chapter of his book, Pliny refers to the same island as Achalia and introduces two further names for it, Lus or Macaron, from Greek, Nu Sigma Omicron Sigma, Mu Alpha Kappa Alpha Rho New Island of the Blessed. The present day measures, he gives at this point, seem to account for an identification of Achalia or Luce with today's Snake Island. Pliny's contemporary Pomponius Mela, circa 43 AD, tells that Achilles was buried on an island named Achalia, situated between the Borysthenes and the Ister, adding to the geographical confusion. Ruins of a square temple, measuring 30 meters to a side, possibly that dedicated to Achilles, were discovered by Captain Critzikli in 1823 on Snake Island. A second exploration in 1840 showed that the construction of a lighthouse had destroyed all traces of this temple. 
A 5th century BC black laced Lycythos inscription, found on the island in 1840, reads, Glaucos, son of Poseidon, dedicated me to Achilles, lord of Laiki. In another inscription from the 5th or 4th century BC, a statue is dedicated to Achilles, lord of Laiki, by a citizen of Albia, while in a further dedication, the city of Albia confirms its continuous maintenance of the island's cult, again suggesting its quality as a place of a super-regional hero veneration. The heroic cult dedicated to Achilles on Luce seems to go back to an account from the lost epic Ethiopus according to which, after his untimely death, Thetis had snatched her son from the funeral pyre and removed him to a mythical Lambda Epsilon Kappa Eta Nu Sigma Omicron Sigma, Laiki Nasos White Island. Already in the 5th century BC, Pindar had mentioned a cult of Achilles on a bright island, Phi Alpha Epsilon Nu 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 Sigma Omicron Sigma, Phanonassos, of the Black Sea, while in another of his works, Pindar would retell the story of the immortalized Achilles living on a geographically indefinite island of the blessed together with other heroes such as his father Peleus and Cadmus. Well known is the connection of these mythological fortune tiles, Mu Alpha Kappa Alpha Rho Nu Nu Sigma Omicron Iota, Makara Nesoi or the Homeric Elysium with the stream Oceanus which according to Greek mythology surrounds the inhabited world, which should have accounted for the identification of the northern strands of the Euxin and with it. Guy Hedrine has found further evidence for this connection of Achilles with the northern margin of the inhabited world in a poem by Alcius, speaking of Achilles lord of Scythia and the opposition of north and south, as evoked by Achilles' fight against the Ethiopian prince Memnon, who in his turn would be removed to his homeland by his mother Eus after his death. The Periplus of the Euxine Sea, circa 130 AD, gives the following details. The Greek geographer Dionysius Periagates, who lived probably during the 1st century AD, wrote that the island was called Luce because the wild animals which live there are white. It is said that there, in Luce Island, reside the souls of Achilles and other heroes, and that they wander through the uninhabited valleys of this island, this is how Jove rewarded the men who had distinguished themselves through their virtues because through virtue they had acquired everlasting honor. Similarly, others relate the island's name to its white cliffs, snakes or birds dwelling there. Pausanias has been told that the island is covered with forests and full of animals, some wild, some tame. In this island there is also Achilles' temple and his statue. Luce had also a reputation as a place of healing. Pausanias reports that the Delphic Pythia sent a lord of Proton to be cured of a chest wound. Aminus Marcellinus attributes the healing to waters, Aquae, on the island. A number of important commercial port cities of the Greek waters were dedicated to Achilles. Herodotus, Pliny the Elder and Strabo reported on the existence of a town Achillean, Chilamda Lambda Epsilon Iota Omicron Nu, built by settlers from Mytilene in the 6th century BC, close to the hero's presumed burial mound in the Trode. Later attestations point to an Achillean in Messenia according to Stephanus Byzantine News, and an Achilleios, Chilamda Lambda Epsilon Iota Omicron Sigma, in Laconia. Nikolai den Susiana recognized a connection to Achilles in the names of Aquilia and of the northern arm of the Danube Delta, called Chilia, presumably from an older Achille, though his conclusion, that Luce had sovereign rights over the Black Sea, evokes modern rather than archaic sea law. The kings of Epirus claimed to be descended from Achilles through his son, Neoptolemus. Alexander the Great, son of the Epirote princess Olympias, could therefore also claim these descent, and in many ways strove to be like his great ancestor. He is said to have visited the tomb of Achilles at Achillean while passing Troy. In AD 216, the Roman emperor Caracalla, while on his way to war against Parthia, emulated Alexander by holding games around Achilles' tumulus. The Greek tragedian Aeschylus wrote a trilogy of plays about Achilles, given the title Achilles by modern scholars. The tragedies relate the deeds of Achilles during the Trojan War, including his defeat of Hector and eventual death when a narrow shot by Paris and guided by Apollo punctures his heel. Extant fragments of the Achilles and other Aeschylean fragments have been assembled to produce a workable modern play. The first part of the Achilles trilogy, The Myrmidons, focused on the relationship between Achilles and Chorus, who represent the Achaean army and try to convince Achilles to give up his quarrel with Agamemnon, only a few lines survive today. In Plato's Symposium, Phaedrus points out that Aeschylus portrayed Achilles as the lover and Patroclus as the beloved. Phaedrus argues that this is incorrect because Achilles, being the younger and more beautiful of the two, was the beloved, who loved his lover so much that he chose to die to revenge him. The tragedian Sophocles also wrote The Lovers of Achilles, a play with Achilles as the main character. 
only a few fragments survive. Towards the end of the 5th century BC, a more negative view of Achilles emerges in Greek drama. Euripides refers to Achilles in a bitter or ironic tone in Hecuba, Electra, and Iphigenia in Aulis. The philosopher Zeno of Elia centered one of his paradoxes on an imaginary footrace between swift footed Achilles and a tortoise, by which he attempted to show that Achilles' school did not catch up to a tortoise with a head start, and therefore that motion and change were impossible. As a student of the Monus Parmenides and a member of the Iliatic school, Zeno believed time and motion to be illusions. The Romans, who traditionally traced their lineage to Troy, took a highly negative view of Achilles. Virgil refers to Achilles as a savage and a merciless butcher of men, while Horace portrays Achilles ruthlessly slaying women and children. Other writers, such as Catullus, Properius, and Ovid, represent a second strand of disparagement, with an emphasis on Achilles' erotic career. This strand continues in Latin accounts of the Trojan War by writers such as Dictus Cretensis and Dares Phrygius and in Benoit de saint Maur's Roman de Truine Guido del Colonsi Storia Destructionis Troi, which remained the most widely read and retold versions of the matter of Troy until the 17th century. Achilles was described by the Byzantine chronicler Leo the Deacon, not as Hellene, but as Scythian, while according to the Byzantine author John Malalas, his army was made up of a tribe previously known as Myrmidons and later as Bulgars. Achilles has been frequently the subject of operas, ballets and related genres. In films Achilles has been portrayed in the following films and television series. In 1890, Elizabeth of Bavaria, Empress of Austria, had a summer palace built in Corfu. The building is named the Achillean, after Achilles. Its paintings and statuary depict scenes from the Trojan War, with particular focus on Achilles. Thanks for watching. Don't forget like the video and don't forget to subscribe.